Stan Jabalisco here uh, with a little discussion of the counterpart to blocking and bypass capacitors in regards to inductors rather than capacitors. Inductors can serve similar uh, porpoises uh, in electronic circuits in certain applications. We would call them choke and shunt inductors. Choking meaning to block something and shunting meaning to bypass something. Let's just take a couple of examples. What we have here on the left in drawing A is an NPN bipolar transistor set up to serve as a very simple amplifier. We have our input here. By golly, I forgot to include the bias resistors that you would normally find in a circuit like this. Plus 12 volts here, ground here. And then we have the output from the collector. And we want to take that through a capacitor to get our signal and pass it along to the next stage. This is a blocking capacitor right here. Well, now how can we bias this? How, suppose that we want this collector to be directly connected to the 12 volt DC power supply source. We want it to be directly connected, but we can't just directly connect it with a, with a wire, because if we do that, we will end up shorting out the output signal through this power supply, which normally has a very low internal resistance between the plus 12 volts and the ground. So we can't just connect a wire there. If we connect a resistor here, then we defeat the purpose of having this collector be at full 12 volts. So what do we do? This, suppose this is a radio frequency amplifier. I don't know what the frequency. Maybe it's operating at 7 megahertz. We can use what we call a radio frequency choke, RFC. That's basically an inductor with a powdered iron core, probably on the order of, oh, maybe 10 millihenries. That ought to be enough. That will prevent radio frequency energy from flowing back to the power supply. It'll let it on out through this capacitor. But it will, because it is a wire coil, provide a DC path here. So it's in effect a DC bypass and a radio frequency choke, commonly abbreviated RFC. So that is an example of an inductor in a choke application. Now suppose we have, on the, on the other hand, a considerably different situation. We have a receiver input tuned circuit here, variable capacitor and coil to provide the frequency that we might want to tune this thing to. Suppose we just want to hear that same 7 megahertz signal and we have this thing tuned to that frequency. We have our antenna and we have a coil that goes straight to ground. Well, we have this capacitor here in order to float the antenna above DC ground. But suppose we don't want to do that. Suppose that we are skittish, <laughs> as it were, about, about that, that, that maybe this is a very long, long short wave receiving antenna, long random wires, say a thousand feet. That's going to develop a pretty significant electrostatic charge which can become dangerous. Even on a clear day that can happen, but if thunder showers are anywhere near, we get a huge voltage on here and that can be quite dangerous. So what do we do? Well, one thing we might do in a situation like this is to get rid of this capacitor and just connect the antenna straight to the coil and let this coil short it to ground so that that will keep the antenna at DC ground potential while still allowing the signal to get on through. So in that case, this coil right here is serving as a shunt inductor. Well, suppose that that is a very small light duty coil and we're, we're a little bit on the nervous side about having that uh, possible current, which uh, might become considerable in the event of a nearby thunder shower, 
that could fry this little coil in, in a receiver like that. Those coils are oftentimes pretty small affairs. Well, we put that capacitor back, and this is a big capacitor, by the way. Maybe can withstand 600 volts, maybe even an air variable set to a maximum capacitance, something like that, to protect this coil against that current. But we don't want that charge building up on there. So what can we do? We can wind a very heavy-duty coil here and ground it directly to the earth. That would be a powdered iron core coil. Another radio frequency choke in effect, but it would serve also to shunt that discharge to ground. So in this case, we could consider it as a shunt inductor. So that is a, just an example of how we can use inductors, in one case for the purpose of choking something off, that is keeping the radio frequency energy out of the power supply, and on the other hand, shorting something out. In this case, shorting out the DC. So this is, in effect, a DC shunt. Stan Jibalisco, signing off. Until next time, so long.